You're getting on the highway, cruise control doesn't work. Potentially your airbag light could be on. We're talking clock spring. The climate control is normally very resilient. The fact that this climate control on temperature and fan is not rock solid reliable. Every time you hit it, we're gonna pull this steering wheel off right now. So you're looking at the steering wheel. First thing you're gonna do on the back is try to pry these out without putting damage on them. Your eight millimeters for the airbag. That will free up your airbag. You got one more on this side too. I just drop it and never see it again. Oh. Now we'll go disconnect the batteries. I mean, I can turn the key, I can mess with it because the steering column is gonna get moved all around. Now or beforehand. Take some backwards pliers. That's how you should disconnect all your battery terminals and very lightly. See how I expanded it? I took it right off. Obviously do it to both of them. Pull the airbag out. Plugs right here. Just be careful. Pull that one. And this one's got a little push tab. I always just a screwdriver. Right there. You take that and uh, put it under your pillow. And this is what you're left with. We're only gonna disconnect this right here. If you look, these are all zip tied. This is a part of the steering wheel. This goes over to these buttons and this one goes over to these buttons. So we have a disconnect right here. And this is a part of the clock spring. All of this comes with the clock spring. Disconnect this little guy right here. And now when I pull the steering wheel off, this stays with the truck. You have to fish these plugs through this hole right here when you pull the steering wheel off. Now we'll take a Phillips there, one right there, and one right there. And that hole right there will let you pull out the ignition. Remember, batteries are disconnected. Really, really hope that we don't have any damage on this wire right here, because we are not replacing that. And we can't die, I, well, we could I, somehow, but chance, man. Now we've got the tumbler to get out. Turn it all the way to on. In this little hole, down in there, there's a BB right there. So you're gonna push on that little BB and then this comes right out. Now I can pull these Phillips out. That way we can separate the housing over the steering column. Oh yeah. If you're lucky, you can spin that out by hand. If you're unlucky, it'll be locked on solid as a son of a gun. Uh, ideally, we probably would have tilted it first. <laughs> all right. Now, actually, let's put that back in so we can move it. Put the shifter all the way down, grab right here and go there. And then go right here, and pop it there, and then come all the way over here and pop it right there. Okay, now you come under here and rub your finger under the climate control and to right here, give it another pop. Bam, there you go. Sometimes you'll have to come over here and pop this side too. A lot of times we can get these out without having to go all that shit crazy. It's kind of a tricky deal. Good time to check your shifter too. Now, since I'm showing you this, let's go ahead and pull this dash off. Look, when you come down here, there's two plugs. You can hit that one, and then this one's on the bottom. You just have to learn where, how you unplug everything without having to look at it. And then over here, oh, oh, it's adjustable pedals. Wasn't even hooked up. Hmm. Okay. And then we've got the info button for the instrument cluster. And in order to do this, it's a lot easier if you do have the shifter down. Let's just see if it'll do it. Because if they're nice and loose, then you can do this. You can do that, and then cock it to the side. Get it out, right there. Now you don't even have to disrupt it. Same with this, you can cock it up a little bit. There's little lock tabs, be careful. You'll break the crap out of them. I've broke a lot of them. And then down here, you got the plugs for the climate control. Best if you have a hand on the top and a hand on the bottom, and you can push them out. And now, you can pull this, just like that. Look at all that room we have now. Safe. Now we can see what the heck we're doing. Jeez, T50. We can just hold it with my knees and see how tight. See, it's not very tight. Okay, now we'll pull the nut out. Now we'll get the steering wheel puller. Steering wheel kit. There's no threads on here. Now this kit right here has got the little hooks with the square drive. Now we put the hooks going in like that. And then we'll put it on the outside with that and that. It's almost not far enough either. I remember that it's not far enough because I've tried it from all kinds of different ways. You can go from the inside out right there, which is much more realistic, but you've got the clock spring that doesn't allow you to do it. I'm holding it back right there and thread this long son of a gun all the way in. Into this steering wheel puller, it's got a little O-ring flange on the end. It's got this little cap here that goes in there and that fits in there without burgering up all the threads. 
So make sure we do that. We need a little oil on it. You see how far out those are? Okay, we're all set up right there. That's for steering wheel pulling. Careful. Here, why don't we take the whole tool kit the heck out of here? Steering wheel puller would be nice if it had something to even a clip over to close these off because for this, it's stretched all the way. You got a, that brass hammer. Just give it a little. Put that dirty hammer inside the truck. A little more. zip tie around the bottom and a zip tie around the top kind of try to hold i have broke out the inside of these before oh. okay you guys want to just see us stay on it and and fight with it might as well might as well get that to be up just a little bit i think it'll hold it Pulling that off. I didn't claim everything was easy. I desperately don't want to break this out. See a little flat? And there's another one down there. Well, if you just try to use a puller and just grab that son of a gun and let her eat, you will break this out right here. And you'll break this one out. I've broke quite a freaking few of them, so I'm trying to take my time and not just wail away at I just had to play with it a little bit and get it off. I got it on a different bite over here, a little further to the left. Nelly, see, it will break that out up top. It's got quite a bit of tension on it right now. It's still on pretty good. Let's give it another turn. Okay. Turn. Another one. Just work it out. It's. Oh, it's coming off now. Slipping, slipping. Damn it. Well, I was fighting it with the steering wheel puller. So try the two jaw puller. about to break out up here on the top. That's a problem with these freaking wheels is they give you that little spot right there. They don't give you a spot in the middle here to catch it or even on the outside out here because of the wires. So you have to grab it up here. And I mean, it, it, every freaking one is different. It ain't like you're gonna sit here and say, oh, well, I get mine off all the time. Well, you know, I deal with a different steering wheel every freaking time. And I really would like to not break that the rest of the way because this is very, very commonly broken right there. It's already starting to crack. Right there, you see it? Yeah, it's already starting to crack and break a little bit. We don't want to destroy that the rest of the way. I put a hose clamp on there to see if we could keep this together. Obviously didn't. Didn't really work. But for now, let's just give it a little bit of time. Oh God. Goodness gracious. Crack it with a hammer? Maybe, I probably should. Goodness. I don't know if I like you. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. Okay. Yay. All right, so the, the clamp was pretty much unneeded, but you get the idea. It would be pretty freaking cool if this thing had something on a two jaw puller to hook these together. Kind of like that cone flange thing we have on the other puller. But we tried just to see. I mean, I just wanted to be freaking careful with it. Let's pull these wires out of here. Just let those fish out. And then you can see what we broke, what we almost broke right there. 
I mean, that's the design spot. That's where you're supposed to pull the steering wheel off and it's just not strong enough to do it. So when we put this back together, I would really push to put a little bit of anti-seize or something on the shaft just so it comes apart because there's only so many times that thing's gonna wind up breaking out. I've had them break out before and they're paying the butt to get off when those parts are missing. They're little locking tabs. That little guy right there. And let's see where the other ones, there's three of them. There's another one right there above the column. And then we should have one more down here some damn where. Right there at the very, very bottom, right there. There's our clock spring. Now we've got the wiring going down to the bottom. Ignition key in circuit fault that I actually cause on almost every single vehicle. It's the black wire with the pink stripe under here on the ignition column here. Oh well, it had a zip tie around the tumbler, probably to hold the, this on that's cut off. When you leave the key in the ignition and you open the door, there's a little ground strap that comes over here on this wire. He's already had it taped up. Somebody's already taped it up. If you get rid of this ground, which is just a ground, you can just cut it. Normally I cut it right there. It's the very bottom left one. That's the one you cut. That's the ground. Let's see. Yep, that little tree right there comes with the new clock spring. So you can just pull this out if you can without breaking everything. Maybe use both hands to do it. Oh, I got a zip tie around it. But this plug and that plug are clock springs. Let's get it off the truck right now and get it ready for the new one. We have to actually pull the push pins out. Probably could use a better light then I could see. What's the clock spring? You think it's broken in there? Uh, let's tear it apart. You can at least take a look. I could break this one off. Pretty much looks like horse crap right there. I was hoping maybe I'd see a visual break. There might be one under there somewhere, but I believe that it is the clock spring. Even though we can't see anything, it's gotta be something here. Maybe I'm just not looking at it close enough, you know. Maybe I'd like one. I don't know. I don't really see any big damage spots, so it's gonna have to be at either this connection or this connection. That sucks. I was really hoping that we would be able to see some green corrosion down in there. This thing went up. There's like a couple hundred bucks for this clock spring. At least we can do is see if we can find a freaking smoking gun, but damn. Who knows? Don't know if we verified it or not, but I bet you. Well, I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet our time. So let's put that in as used parts. Pop always gets spilled here. I just try to wipe some of this off. Wipe it down, because now's a good time. We're gonna be cleaning everything up. Little ledge up here at the top. Just take a little time, you know? It doesn't hurt to act like it's your truck. Because normally this probably will be your truck. You're doing this too. Just clean off as much as we can. A lot of this is I mean, you might as well. It's These are always freaking nasty as hell. I take steering column apart. My hands are disgusting. Order. Honestly, just give a little bit of a crap. Hell. There's our ignition key and circuit fault code. I'm just going to pull this pin. That way it can be put back in anytime you want. Purple and black wire, that's your ignition key and fault. So if you look inside of here, we've got this long little tab right here. See this thing? That's the lock to keep those tabs from pushing down. So when you come over to this side right here, we've got this little spot. And push it up and then that'll come out. Okay, there's a little notch that goes inside a little locking tab. Let me just get it all pushed down right there. We've got the pin gone and no wires need to be cut. And you've got your, your three spots here on the side, that one on the side, and that one on the bottom. You just push this on it. It's complete rocket science. This guy right here is existing. That was on the truck. So don't take that off and just hook it right there. It says top on the top. All right, this, there's no bolts to hold this. It's just locked in with those 
three plastic tabs. Now we'll look in here. That one's locked in. Physically look at all of them and make sure that they lock all the way in. We've got one more down here. Is that one locked in? Yep, that's good. Under here, we'll plug in into this hole all the way up here. Oh, go, go, go. I want to pop this loose because that is not in the right spot. Don't try to drag it through there. Kind of a drag, but it's not in the right spot. That's a freaking okay. Right, well, make sure you hold both sides of the harness when you hook that up. You just wind up pushing crap everywhere. All right, this is the ground, it really doesn't matter, not one bit. Right there. That is proper installation. Now that makes contact when you put the key in, there's that completes the ground. We'll go ahead and leave it in there because this doesn't matter because it's unhooked down there. So Ron, you're, it's not gonna be dinging at you. So that's a bonus. Obviously going on is a lot easier than coming back. lost a sticker memento sticker forward part number on we'll stick that right back on there once you get this thing connected to the hub slid onto the column this little plastic piece right here is just for while you're carrying it once you get those tabs locked in and this this engages on the shaft in here you're done you're good you don't need this plastic piece no more the copper and i and i'm just going to touch it just like that. A little dab on the bottom. I don't really want it anywhere I don't want. Find your center. See that right there? That means it had red Loctite on it. So we'll put just one little dot of Loctite, just a little to hold it, that's enough. And we'll go 50 foot pounds on this thing. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. Give it a good old boy shake. Now we'll hook this wire up, and that one will be done. That doesn't get any more provisions, and then this goes to the airbag, that goes to the airbag. I put it under my pillow and nothing happened. The logo goes up. <laughs> Boom! Holy shit, can you imagine that? Where am I going here? <laughs> Figure out where the hell I'm at. All right, boom, and the horn pad. I mean, when the clock spring's messed up, you don't know if you can trust the horn pad, but a lot of times guys hit the horn, which doesn't look like. Normally there'll be a dent in the logo and you'll buy a truck and the horn fuse will be out. Put the horn fuse in, the horn's gonna honk consistently all the time. That means you have to take this thing apart and pull these tabs out of here and then that'll pull this out and that's a little bladder that's inside of there. So that's Ask for- Ask us how we know. That's for another video. We'll put the eights back in the back side of the airbag damage hope not like it never even happened these little standoffs right here that one and that one it goes in that little boss right there so if you look around you'll find places for all of this to go take this out oh, come on. there we go okay I don't touch you <laughs> you should be able to get it done pretty pretty quick Put the tilt lever back in. Don't tear anything up. Okay, it's right there where that shifter is, and especially if you have a, a screen, a TV, very, very easy to scratch it with the back of the, of the climate control module. Yeah, it'd be very, very easy to just destroy that crap. What am I doing? <laughs> Should I have not done that? Hey, that's upside down, dear. <laughs> there you go. It's just sometimes those plugs, man. You take those plugs out too freaking much. It's the same with this. You take these out too freaking much. Any of it wind up. 
making him mad. There. Did you guys see that? Probably didn't. Did you? I, hope, I hope they saw it. Okay. Put that in, and that is ready to go. Let's put it there, pop it back in. Now, once again, to plug this back in, you just feel it. You guys, you guys see where I'm at? There. There. Now I got the info. A lot of these are nice if you put your hands on it as you seat it. Like this one, the adjustable pedal one was not seated. You will push it out, see, like that. So just make sure the harness is seated pretty good. Pick up the headlight wire. Both of these. Now lining this up. Let's see if I know how to do this. Let's see if I know how to do it. There's that. Now we can throw the key back in. There's a little BB down at the bottom. Okay. Need the keys in it. It's in the shop. That is your clock spring replacement. You got your airbag light on. Cruise control doesn't work. I mean, I can't say radio functions. He's got an aftermarket radio. A lot of times, some of those controllers are just shaky at best to get the aftermarket radio to work with the buttons. But the cruise control and the climate control should always flawlessly work. And let's just hope he's good now forever.